What do you do? What do you do? J Boy Crew, greatest crew of all time. It's a boy J Boogie back with another video for y'all tonight. I'm gonna react to another Emmy Richu video, or a recent one that she dropped today. I think she got a problem, bro. I don't want to say a problem, but she got an addiction going to these uh, anime cafes, bro. Because, man, she loves the anime cafes, bro. But, saying here, she traveled 200 miles for a Demon Slayer cafe. Hey, I would too. But it better be good, bro. It better be good, man. It better be good. Nah, I'll go 200 miles for some for a cafe spot, bro. It better be good, man. Food, drinks, environment, everything better be on my money, bro. Uh, shoot, I better get a sword, homie, if, it, if I'm traveling 200 miles. But we're going to jump into this video. Before I begin, you already know what to do, Dre Booty Crew. Go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe. Comment below if you got any other videos you want me to react to. And what else? What else? Pretty much it. Go ahead and share this video, all right? Let's go. Let's get it. I promise I'm not turning into a channel that just makes cafe content, okay? Yes, I know my last video was literally a 44-minute video about cafes, but I promise yeah. I have a very good reason for traveling all the way to Sendai for a Demon Slayer cafe and making this video. Number one, there is technically a permanent Demon Slayer cafe in Tokyo, which is where I live. And it's a oh. quotable cafe, which operates on a weekly lottery system. And I'm going to react to her... Moving to uh, Japan as well. Her and died is a video. So, okay. We're going to jump in. We're going to get into that, all right? actually applied to Ufotable Cafe several times. And I have been rejected about seven times. It doesn't matter if I applied for 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. I was unsuccessful every time. And eventually, I just Dang. gave up. So, when it was announced that this pop-up cafe would not require reservations and also not be in busy Tokyo, I thought this would be my only chance to eat a Demon Slayer-themed cafe menu, which many people have requested. Number two, there was an exhibit huh. happening alongside the cafe, and I really enjoy exhibits, so I thought that would make the journey even more worth it. And number three, most importantly, the menu looked incredible. I'm not going to show it now because I don't want to spoil the surprise, but the menu looked way better than what you would find at your average collab cafe. And of course, Laptop I wouldn't be going dirty. through all this trouble if I wasn't actively keeping up with the recently finished season of Demon Slayer, which I was able to do thanks to NordVPN. I've actually been using this VPN the way to she slides in her, her ads, bro. Living in Japan means that Crunchyroll isn't accessible for me, and Japanese Netflix doesn't always have English subtitles available for the shows I want to watch. But with NordVPN, I can switch over to the U.S. with a click of a button and oh, watch right. with English subtitles. I keep subtitles forgetting, so I can keep bro. Weekly She's not, <laughs> but that's not all that NordVPN can do. It will <coughs> help you stay safe online from cybersecurity threats by managing your passwords and alerting you when your credentials have been compromised. Their threat protection feature helps you stay protected from phishing scams, malware, and unwanted malvertising. And with my link, you can get four months extra on a two-year plan at nordvpn.com slash emerichu. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guaranteed. Watch the shows you want and keep yourself protected with today's sponsor, NordVPN. Link will be included in the description if you're interested. Dang. Nice. I don't okay. like traveling alone, so I brought along Daru, who at this point Daru. is extremely used to getting roped into my spontaneous cafe adventures. But also, she's a big Demon Slayer fan. Oh, even better. We decided the smartest thing to do would be to take the bullet train to Sendai the night before so that we could head straight to the exhibit the day after, rather than force ourselves to leave super early in the morning. The Shinkansen from Tokyo to Sendai cost 11,410 yen per person, and on top of that, even though oh, the cafe didn't require Boy, I swear the God. exhibit did, so and it was 3,710 yen per person. So, so we 51. booked two for 10 a.m. on the 25th of July, and since we were staying overnight, we also booked a hotel that was close to the venue, which cost 8,874 yen. Wake me up. Wake me up. I can't wake up. Wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> so we made it to Sendai That's on the evening of the 24th and got some yakiniku for dinner at Nikugen Sendai, where we ordered some tasty <coughs> meat stairs. And my favorite thing was this thinly sliced beef mixed with egg yolk over rice. It was so good. That looked Nikugen good. Nikugen isn't unique to Sendai, but we really wanted something meaty and within walking distance to our hotel. It was a very satisfying dinner and just what I needed to knock out early so I'd be well rested for a very busy morning. In the morning, we woke up bright and early to get ready for our 10 a.m. exhibit reservation, and I decided to wear a Mitsuri Kanroji-inspired outfit because she's my favorite character. Unfortunately, I was only allowed to take a picture of the display at the very beginning of the exhibit. All other photography oh. or video recording was strictly prohibited. 
The closest thing I can show you are some pictures of the exhibit in a pamphlet I bought at the merch store. I was store. right. But even yeah. then, the I can't show you everything you can't, uh, because if you haven't finished videos. reading the manga, the exhibit has a heavy amount of spoilers. So for the sake of the anime-only viewers, I can't show everything. Since I don't have video gotcha. footage of the exhibit, I'm just going to very briefly describe exactly what we saw. And if you're like, Emily, I don't care about the exhibit, I just want to see the cafe, then feel free to use the timestamps to skip ahead. So the exhibit displayed the original Demon Slayer manga pages drawn by Koyoharu Gotoge. And since this was the first time I'd ever seen the original manga pages of anything, I was really surprised at how big the pages were in person. Because you sort of get used to viewing manga in the um, much smaller book form or you know, like best not look at these pictures, bro. Phone or something. And this was honestly really surreal to me because you could see the original blue sketch lines peeking around the line art and all the spots where Gotoge used white out to fix inking mistakes and add white detailing. And you could see the pen strokes in the inking. Like there's so many little details in the art that you wouldn't notice in the scans. And the skill and technique really show in these original pages. Like, I started tearing up a little bit Sing it. going around the exhibit because I was just in awe of how much work and skill went into every panel. And getting to see a mangaka's original work up close and personal like that is just really inspiring for me as an artist. They also had a lot of really cool displays for each Hashira and a statue recreation of Muzan. But again, no pictures allowed, unfortunately. Since then, I've actually gone to a Death Note manga exhibit where we were allowed to take pictures of the displays, but not the original manga pages, which That's were tight. incredible to look at in person. And a Yotsubato manga exhibit where they saw the I gotta check the Death Note one, bro. Everything. Like, I'm wholly convinced that Kiyohiko Azuma is not a real human being because his attention to detail is insane. Wow, that Both is insane. Both of these titles have been a huge part of my childhood, so... It was honestly incredible getting to see their original manga pages and illustrations. So all that to say, I highly recommend going to a manga exhibit if you get the chance. I promise it's a really, really cool experience and ticket prices are surprisingly not that expensive. Probably because they know you're gonna blow all your money anyway on the merch that they always have at the end. Speaking of which, the merch store at the end had a ton of stuff, and before my trip, I'd actually messaged my friend Hana to ask if she was interested in any of the goods since she's a really big Demon Slayer fan. She let me know which ones caught her interest and said, feel free to pick one or two and surprise me, but please do not actually buy them all and blow your money, okay? Okay. Hmm. So naturally, I got everything she pointed out to me. This included a box of Demon Slayer printed cookies, Ooh. a set of colored paper art and acrylic block, a set of acrylic minifigures, and a wooden tray with Tanjiro's image. For myself, I got a plastic poster, a file folder set with the exhibit illustrations, and a second file folder set which had the cutest art, some Demon Slayer Yokan for the Geeks Plus office, a ticket holder, the exhibit pamphlet book, a sticker good. set, a bottle of ramen candies made to look like medicine from Tamayo, That's and clean. my personal favorite, a little Nesco box keychain with a peephole that revealed the tiny oh, that is clean. thing in the box. As a freebie for that. attending the exhibit, we also received a thank you illustration featuring Tanjiro and Nesco. <laughs> and lastly, for Didus, I purchased this box of Demon Slayer bath salts, which had unique scents for each character. Next stop was the cafe. Luckily for us, since it was a Tuesday afternoon in Sendai, there was zero <laughs> wait time, so we were seated immediately. We were only allowed to take pictures of the cafe area, so please bear with this slideshow, but the walls were basically giant screens where they showed various manga panels showcasing each of the nine Hashira, and they cycled through the cover illustrations of all the manga volumes. I thought this was really cool. These screens were huge, and I got really excited every time it looped back to Meet City's panels. The cafe was also really nice and spacious, and as soon as we sat down, we were given a menu and a checklist to mark off all the things that we wanted to order. And we got quite a bit, starting with Tanjiro's water breathing float. This was a melon soda float with cream and white chocolate waves. We thought the presentation of this drink was really well done and it tasted pretty good. The Kocho Sisters Ramane float. This drink included butterfly pea jelly combined with ramane, which is apparently Kanao's favorite food. This was a really oh, tasty good. combination and the addition of the butter. Oh, that looked good shaped chocolate was a really nice touch. The chocolate! Muzan soft cream. 
This was a milk flavored soft serve ice cream in milk. a bamboo oh, charcoal milk cone flavored. topped with dry raspberries, cookie crumble, and raspberry chocolate made to resemble tentacles. Daru really enjoyed this one and she finished it all by herself. Dang. I also ordered an Inosuke printed character latte just for the cute art. I think I would have preferred foam instead of thick cream, but mm. the latte tasted fine. The sun breathing kima curry. Oh, that is clean. This is the most delicious item we ordered. That is there clean. Were fried seasoned spring roll skins shaped to resemble Tanjiro's fire breathing technique with rice, ground beef, and fresh tomatoes at the bottom. This one was super crunchy, savory, and flavorful. The most expensive what? item on the menu was this Hashira themed gozen set with a taste of the favorite foods of all nine Hashira. It also came That's with clean. a sheet detailing which dish represented each Hashira. There was. Salmon and radish for Tomioka, yep. sweet potato salad for Rengoku, yep. ginger tsukudo yep. for Shinobu, fugu sashimi for Uzui, hmm. boiled radish really for Michiro, yep. kororo kombu for Obanai, yeah. ohagi for Sanemi, yep. sakura mochi for Michi, yeah, yeah. and rice with salmon roll for Gyome. I can see that. I, I, know, no stone, really I don't know stone and and like that, and but it was really it fun like to try all the different either. flavors. For dessert, we ordered the Nesco Bamboo Chocolate. This gorgeous dessert made to a look like Nesco's chocolate. bamboo cup was made with chocolate, and inside there was berry puree, bittersweet chocolate cream, and crunchy crepe dough. Nesco's favorite food is competo, which are those little star candies. So there was also a little garnish of competo around the plate. This was such a visually pleasing dish, but it was a bit too chocolatey for me personally. Mm. So after trying some, I let Daru handle the rest of it, and she completely cleaned the plate. She damn near licked One it! One thing to know about me is if you go eating out with me, you are guaranteed an extra helping of dessert. In addition to the items you order to eat in, there were also a few items available for takeout that we decided to purchase. One was a beef nabe bento made to look like the beef bento Rengoku ate in the Mugen Train movie. The sukiyaki was made with beef from Sendai and hitomebore rice from Miyagi. Damn, it looked good. We saved it to eat on the train back home to Tokyo, and it was, in fact, umai. The second takeout item was Rengoku's memento chocolate, which was white, raspberry, and passion fruit chocolate. Damn, it looked look like good, bro. Gonna, okay. Lastly, we had to get these Inosuke cookies. They were so oh, sweet yeah. and adorable. So I bought one to take home and one to share with the Geek Plus office. Mm hmm. After a very fun and filling meal, bro, we to go to Japan, bro. Some shopping at Lost Dang. before we headed back home. So we browsed the stationery aisle. I found the perfect birthday gift for Connor, and I got myself a super cute strawberry printed UV sun umbrella and this rain umbrella shaped like a dahlia. Sendai is also known for their zunda shakes, which is basically edamame boiled and mashed and mixed with sugar and blended with milk. It was an interesting flavor, but to be honest, I wasn't really a fan. Even though we were in Sendai for such a short time, it was a really fun trip, and I know this will probably not be the last time I go on an overnight cafe-motivated excursion. If we're just looking at the costs of Shinkansen tickets, hotel, exhibit tickets, merchandise, and cafe food, for two people, this entire trip cost 117,164 yen, which in today's conversion rate is around $800. So this definitely takes the crown. Low key, for that ain't bad, bro. Trip I've ever done. That ain't bad. I'd say it was worth it. I give this cafe a glowing five out of five. Yeah. For those of you interested in this particular exhibit, it will be held next in Okayama from December 15th to February 18th. Additional Shoes. information hasn't been I'll released yet at the time of this well. recording, so I actually don't know if they're going to be doing a collab cafe as well. I'll be including a link to the overview of the event if you want to stay updated. Thank you. Whoa, looks like demon blood. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid, bro. <laughs> this is a good video, bro. This is actually good. I actually, I ain't gonna lie. This actually look good. Jeremy Crow, this is looking pretty good. I liking it, man. Dang, I wish I could be in Japan. I ain't gonna cap. I wish I was in Japan right now, bro. I'll be killing all that food, bro. Knowing me, even though, even though the funny thing, funny thing about me, I'm picky, bro. I'm a picky eater, bro. I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. If I go to Japan, I gotta change that, bro. I have to change that, man. I gotta stop being picky, y'all. But, um... Oh, that was a good video. It was funny at the end, homie. What the heck? It's <laughs> literally every time I think of when I think of Demon Slayer, it's literally that episode, that like, title card episode, bro. It hits me every time. But, uh... Other than this cafe spot, this one... Um... This, I heard there's a One Piece cafe in uh, Houston, Texas, bro. 
I don't know, man. I hope it's worth the road trip, bro. And I, I think it's another one in Dallas. I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's. I think it's over now, though. But I heard about them some anime cafes out here in Texas, though. But uh, other than that was a good video. I enjoyed this, man. I, I ain't a lot. Her videos are funny, bro. It's really good, man. But hopefully we get back to some animation, cause man, she <laughs> low key is Laura look like she doing cafes, bro. But um. Uh, other than that, JV Crew, finna jump to another video. I uh, might jump in. I might actually do the, uh, when she goes to Japan, that one, and do Di her version, do Dice's version. I think that'd be the last of my list of what I have to catch up on with Emirichu. Other than that, uh, the Zama 100 videos I've done with Hillside Click are pretty much almost done editing. It was hard to edit those videos, I ain't cap. Because my camera kept dying, so it was hard to edit some of the videos make with the actual like video that we did like the whole picture in picture thing but um so far that's almost done another and the another anime i'm i'm getting into that y'all i will finish that anime for y'all all right i will finish it i finished one <laughs> about to edit that one and i'm about to drop the rest okay just be impatient, all right? All right, let me let me let me cook, all right? Let me cook. It's gonna take a little. I have to let some stuff marinate, all right? But uh, let me cook. I got you, all right? But um, other than that, Jeremy Crew, that's uh, that's all I gotta say for to keep you updated. And um, with that being said, Jeremy Crew, if you enjoyed my reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, comment below what's your favorite dish from this. I'm gonna go with the drinks. Drinks looking nice in that bento box with the. From Rengoku. Oh, that look good. I ain't a cat. I'll take I'll, I'll eat that instead, bro. I'd rather eat that. But um uh than that, if wherever was your favorite dish, drop down in the comment section below. And also, um, go ahead and share this video with everyone. J Boogie out. Yeah, J Boogie out. That's it. Before I'm even